Watch over Ivy. She died. I don't know what I'd do. <clears throat> Sam. Nice. I didn't know you were here. Yeah, I know. There's no one else who could pray for her right now. Sam, I understand. Ethan has no idea his mother was struck by lightning. She needs to go into surgery. Could die. And Julian? <laughs> Julian. Alive or dead, he couldn't care less. But it means a lot to you that Ivy survives this, doesn't it? Yes, I want Ivy to survive. Of course you do. <sighs> so do I. You know, there was a time that I'd get angry just at the sight of her. I had no pity for her. I couldn't care less what happened to her one way or the other. But now you do. Well, like it or not, she's part of our lives. We share Ethan. He's our son. There's more than that. What do you mean? There's something else. I, would. I was with Ivy in the park before. She was struck by lightning. I, I realized how vulnerable she was. It hit me how little she's gotten out of life. How unhappy she's been with Julian. I'm not excusing the things that she's done. She should have told me Ethan was my son. She shouldn't have pushed her way into our lives. No, she shouldn't have done that. I know she's hurt you terribly. But her unhappiness runs so deep. It's her fault. She knows it. But still. Still you feel for her. I feel sorry. For the first time, I, I, I feel sorry for her. I understand what she's been through. I guess you and I are in the same boat then. When David and I were trapped in the shed together, he talked a lot about our life together, the time we spent. And when I disappeared, it was really tough on him. I guess... In the same way that you feel sorry for Ivy, I feel sorry for David. How did our life get so complicated? I just wish I knew. But I know that these problems are real. Can't ignore them, turn our backs on them, wish they'd just disappear. No. We have to confront them face on. Just afraid it's gonna take a lot out of us. Not only what's going on with us, but Ivy and David are part of our lives, too. And then there's Ethan. He may be a grown man, but he's my son. Starting a new life of his own. Ivy asked me to look after him. To let him be part of our lives, our family. I couldn't say no. But you have the final word, Grace. I do. If you're unwilling to accept Ethan into our home, then I'll meet him outside. No, 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 Sam, that wouldn't be right. Look, if, if Ethan is part of your life, then he's a part of my life. Thank you. I guess we just uh, got to accept that our family isn't what it once was. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's not just Ethan, either. It's David, too. David. Sam, I know you don't want to accept it, but David is very much a part of our life. <sighs> Look, you may not want it to be true, but 
the fact is, and you're going to have to accept this, David is my husband. Grace. Sam, he passed every test that Why we gave him. He knows see? all kinds of things about me, little everyday things, what I eat, what I wear. He knows things that only a husband should know. There's a marriage certificate. A priest. A priest remembers marrying us, Sam. Admit it. David is a part of my life. So he's got to be a part of our life. David may claim to remember a lot of things, but do you remember him? I remember our wedding. But you don't remember seeing the groom's face. He's conned you, Grace. I've said this from the very beginning. He's making a well, fool Sam, out of you. Stop it. I won't stop believing what I know is the truth. David, now and forever, is a part of my life. That's the truth. You have to stop fighting it. I don't know how you like your coffee, so I just left it black. But Grace, obviously, uh, no sugar, bit of milk, right? Sam, please, let's be civil. Thank you for the coffee, and uh, thank you for getting Grace through the hurricane. Well, she's my wife. I laid down my life for her. I appreciate your help. I would appreciate it even more if you'd stop calling her your wife. Same. Because I don't care how many tricks you have in your bag, or what you say, or what you claim to remember. You'll never convince me that you were married to her. I didn't come here to start an argument. I don't want to argue either, especially here in the chapel. But you know, and I know, Grace has amnesia. Haven't we already been over this? I'm not through going over it. Sam. The fact that she remembers nothing prior to our meeting means that you're free to make up whatever you like. Sam. As long as Grace believes it. He's not making things up. How do you know? Because... Really, how can you be sure? How do you know he didn't hire a detective to find out these things about you? Oh, that's ridiculous. But when I'm talking to you, why would I hire a detective? What is in it for me? Look, I'm sorry, but whether you like it or not, just as Ivy is a part of your life, I am a part of Grace's well, life. Hold on a second. Ivy is a very small part of my life. Oh, come on. It's so obvious how important she is to you. You stay with her through the hurricane. She was at the park. And I asked her to leave. And not once did you come back and check on Grace. I was trying to fix the beacon. Besides, I didn't know Grace was in danger. But you didn't know for sure she wasn't. All I'm trying to say is that if it were I, I wouldn't have stayed with Ivy. I would have gone back and checked on my wife. But something kept you there with Ivy. Something kept you away. Maybe you don't admit it, but something kept you out there with Ivy, didn't it? You weren't his first allegiance. You stepped over the line. You were talking about things that you know nothing about. So if I were you, I would butt out. This is between my wife and me. So if you've got anything else to add, we can do it outside. Sam, please don't make threats. You know, I've... I've taken your anger, and I've endured your bullying tactics. And I've tried to be understanding. Oh! You're a real class act. And yet you still refuse to face the facts. In the eyes of God and the state, Grace is my wife. Sam, Sam, please. He's been quite fair. Fair? Is it fair to have a man walk into your life out of blue and try to steal your wife? Grace, you are my wife. And I don't care what he says. Nobody. It's gonna take you away from me. Make myself perfectly clear. No one is gonna take my wife away from me. I'm sorry to see you upset like this, Sam. But I guess it's to be expected. Better back off. If you think your anger frightens me, you've got the wrong guy. And there's nothing you can say or do that's gonna scare me away. 
I came to Harmony for one reason only, to get my wife. Now, you can threaten me all you want, but I'm not leaving Harmony without her.